Let's take a look at Tensor Trade here. This, this is an older repository, I want to say, where it makes reinforcement learning for trading on the stock market a little bit easier. But it's not just the stock market. You can do uh, crypto. Um, you can do other environments as well. In this tutorial specifically, what we'll be looking at is how we can look at our observation in a ledger to see what kind of actions a random um, state is taken. So the first thing we need to do is install tensor trade. And once that's done, we'll need to install the default environment. We're going to need the feed data as well as some observational um, stipulations that are, I think, pretty unique to tensor trade. And I'll, once we get to this part of the tutorial, I'll explain what it is. But first thing we'll need to do is download some data. So TensorTrade makes it really easy. Um, this method here calls anything that's on the crypto download in North America. So um, what we'll be doing is fetching uh, US dollar to Bitcoin for one hour time series on the Bitfinex exchange. We'll be doing the same thing with Ethereum, and we'll call both of those on the Bitstamp um, exchange as well. So what does it look like when we call it? It would probably help if I actually ran that cell. So when we actually call it, we just get this pretty basic data frame here, date, Unix, open, high, low, close volume. And so we've got four of these things, four of these data frames at one hour intervals. So interesting, the thing about TensorTrade is you need to create exchanges um, that you'll stream into your environment. So what this means is that we're going to take the close of our data frames here, and we're going to define that as the exchange that we're trading on. And that's what we're going to pass through our environment. And then we'll need wallets. So what a wallet is, say we're going to trade Bitcoin on the Bitfinex exchange. The prices for Bitcoin on this exchange might be different on another exchange. And so um, this is pretty common with arbitrage in crypto, but this is a way for our agent to understand what exactly is held in our entire portfolio because we have all these different wallets that contain different amounts of these coins. So we have a bit we have a Bitfinex exchange wallet of our Ethereum in this wallet, BTC in this wallet, USD in this wallet. And that's all on that Bitfinex exchange. Same thing with Bitstamp and that the aggregate of all those different wallets is our portfolio. So this is these are things that we need to set up um, to initialize our environment. And I think the reasoning behind this was to make things a little bit more modular in TensorTrade's eyes. I'm still on the fence as to whether this is actually um, a better method than what FinRL has. It is certainly pretty easy to set up this way, um, but I'm still on the fence about it. Um, so, again, a feed is something that allows us to track what um, what is happening in the environment at each observation state. So one feed we're going to set up is tracking the volume of our exchanges as well. And then we we're finally ready to initialize our environment by, you know, initializing our portfolio, what we're going to say is a simple orders method for our action scheme, simple profit for our reward scheme. TensorTrade comes with different um, reward schemes and orders or action schemes. So that's something that you can poke around in as well. And then we'll just pass in this feed up here for our feed here. Um, and this will just be something that we can observe. Finally, what we're going to do here is we're going to take random actions within our space. And so we're not training any agent here. The I sort of I guess the objective of this uh, tutorial is to show you how you can read the ledger 
of actions taken by an agent. So normally we would then initialize our agent and then we would pass through our agent here. But in this case, I just want to show you that we can take a look at the ledger. And I think this is something that TensorTrade has going for itself more than FinRL does. Uh, it's not quite as intu intuitive as FinRL. So while, while it's not done, we're just going to run through all the actions here. It takes It's very quick. And let's go ahead and take a look at our portfolio ledger. Uh, why is that not going through? I don't know why it wasn't working at first, but this is our ledger. It's a little hard to see, but you can see here at what step um, the source, the target that we were going for, the memo, so what is actually happening on this ledger, the amounts, how much we have free, what's locked, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes through all the steps here um, that we have. So I've just called seven. Um, again, we can do this again. I'll do it on a managed risk orders. So this would be random samples with the action scheme of managed risk. Again, we're just trying to make a simple profit on this. Oh, come on. There we go. And so we get another data frame. Now you might be wondering like, what good is this? Well, if let's say we passed an agent through this environment action instead of just a random sample that we're taking in our action space for each step. Um, this would be a way to actually look at what your agent is doing. Um, and I think this is really valuable because like I was saying earlier, it's not intuitive in FinRL, but um, it would be really interesting to see what exactly the agent is doing for its actions um, in, a, in the space. So this is one way that TensorTrade has gone about ac accomplishing this. And then if you want to export it to Excel, you can just run this frame, this little file cell here, and it will create the ledger as an Excel sheet. And you can download it, coming here, hit download, and then you can open it up in Excel and take a look at each trade of the ledger in that action space. Um, I think this helps give a lot more granularity to what the agent is doing. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.